Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to all of you. So so today we will start with our chapter number 2. So the title for chapter number 2 is two dimensional cascade bleed. So we learn about the two dimensional analysis in terms of equation, graph and so on. And also we will learn about the cascade bleeds in terms of properties, parameter, profile and so on. Okay, for chapter number two, number two in terms of content, so we have <coughs> uh, first topic. Topic we have cascade bleed. Second, energy losses, and the third one we have we will discuss about leaf and drag. So under subtopic of cascade bleed, we will learn about the introduction, bleed profile, and also analysis. So under energy losses subtopic. We learn about the bleed losses and also pressure losses. So the final subtopic we learn about the introduction of the leaf and drag, basic equation that involve for leaf and drag, coefficient, and the last one is the effect of angle of attack to the uh, performance of the uh, turbo machine or the uh, the effect of angle of attack to the leaf and also the the, the drag value for the cascade blade. Okay, now let we start with the cascade blade introduction. Introduction to cascade blade. First, we look at these figures. So this figure shows the um, half cut of a gas turbine engine. So in this gas turbine engine, there are two type of uh, component that we consider as a turbo machine. First, the compressor. And the second one is uh, tur the turbine. So, in terms of mechanism, we already discussed in previous chapters, where uh, for the gas turbine engine, the air will suck by the compressor in order to compress the air, and then the air, the compressed air, will enter the the combustion chamber. So, the combustion process will occur that produce exhaust gas, and this exhaust gas will transfer energy to the turbine so that the ter turbine will rotate and produce work output to rotate the generator so now in this slide I would like to um, explain discuss the different in term of blade shape for the compressor and also blade shape for the turbine and also the physical uh, phys physical condition for the for the blade arrangement for the compressor and also for the turbine. Okay, first let we look at the compressor. So this photo shows the um, compressor roto. Okay, where if we redraw the cross section of the compressor blade, so we will get flat shape of compressor blade. Okay, so for the compressor blade, we need to consider two type of direction. First, that that represent by the yellow color arrow represent the rotation direction of the compressor rotor. So for the compressor, the rotor of the compressor must must rotate first, and then for the next stage, after the rotational movement of the rotor occur the air or the fluid will suck into the compressor the fluid will flow through the compressor due to the rotational movement of the rotor then we need to consider the second flow that we call fluid flow direction that represent by the red color arrow okay next for the turbine so the figures the photo shows the uh, turbine roto and clearly we can see the different in terms of shape of the compressor blade and also the turbine blade so if we redraw the cross section drawing of the turbine blade so we will get a curved shape of turbine blade and also for turbine we need to consider two type of direction first the fluid flow direction that represent by red arrow color 
so for the turbine so we need to the turbine must receive energy from the fluid which is referred to the exhaust gas that produce from the combustion chamber then after the fluid flow through the turbine so the turbine will rotate and then we need to consider the second flow which is represented by the yellow color arrow uh, so the arrow represents the rotational movement of the rotor okay so that's uh, the different in terms of um, blade shape and also the physical condition for the compressor rotor and also turbine rotor okay so uh, for the uh, different type of arrangement of the turbine and also for the compressor the operation of any turbine machine actually is directly dependent dependent upon changes in the working fluids angular momentum as it cross individual bit rows so in order to understand this statement we need to refer to this figure where this figure shows the arrangement of blades in a turbo machine where we, where we have two component here first component we call stator so the stator refer to the component in in a turbo machine where the blade arrangement is in static condition so the blade doesn't move during the operation so the second component is referred to the component with a moving blade that we call a roto so the direction of the blade depend on on the direction of the roto okay let's we look in terms of a uh, fluid flow direction throughout the stator and also the roto okay so in this figure shows the axial flow direction of fluid enter the stator and then come out from the stator and the direction of the fluid is depend on the blade stator, uh, stator blade that uh, shape stator blade shape so the direction uh, for the fluid at the outlet condition of the stator depend on the blade shape and then the fluid will enter the stator at certain direction and come out from the rotor so the direction or the angle of the fluid enter the rotor is is referred as alpha and the value of alpha normally we refer as angle of attack angle of attack so the angle of attack value will determine the direction of fluid enter the rotor and the value will affect the working fluid angular angular momentum and this value will determine whether the rotor rotate um, in high speed condition or low speed condition so this parameter or this parameter we directly effect the performance of a turbo machinery including the compressor and also the turbine okay now we discuss about the two dimensional analysis what is the two dimensional analysis so this analysis actually the simplest approach to study of axial flow turbo machine and for this analysis we assume that flow condition at the mean radius fully represent the flow at all other radius okay to understand the statement let me look at the few figures okay so this figures shows the against my engine so now we try to focus uh, on the turbine so this is the turbine and if we take out the rotor of the turbine so this is uh, the the I call the features of the turbine rotor okay so the cross uh, line pink line represent the center of the rotor so if we take out so this rotor actually uh, consists of numbers of blade and if we take what take out one turbine blade we will get this kind of features for the turbine blade single turbine blade 
okay and uh, now the figure shows the record schematic diagram of the turbine blade so we want just want to we will use this figure to explain the statement of flow condition at the mean radius fully represent the flow at all other radius okay for the two dimensional analysis okay let's say okay the cross line cross pink line represent the center of the roto so the distance from the center to the tip of the of the of the blade represent the tip radius rt and the distance from the center to the base of the blade we call the half radius rh and the sister the distance bit uh, bit start from the center to the middle point of the blade we call mean radius or rm so now for the two dimensional analysis our focus is at mean radius location okay okay at this uh, point so where the the result any result that we obtain um, at the location of mean radius we assume that all other radius uh, will obtain the same result including at the radius tips and also at the radius hub okay so so we assume that uh, the result that obtained at the mean radius will represent the result for all location throughout the bleed okay so this is example of the um, simulation result so let's say this result obtained uh, at the location of mean radius so that all other ready we assume that we'll get the same radius sorry we will get the same result as the result obtained at the mean radius location so that's the meaning of the meaning of two dimensional analysis okay now we look at the meaning of a cascade blade what is the meaning of a cascade blade okay the cascade blades actually refer to a set of blades comprises a number of identical blades equally spaced and parallel to one another so there are three keywords in the definition of a cascade blade first a number of identical blades second equally spaced and the third one is parallel to one another so we have if you refer to the definition of cascade blade we have a set of blade a set of identical blade so the, we have three blades blades here which is identical in terms of shape and equally spaced so number one represent the location of the inlet and number two represent the location of the outlet so we have flow direction at the inlet flow direction at the outlet and we have angle of attack alpha okay and the in term of uh, the arrangement of the blade all three blades is uh, are parallel to one another so uh, the figures uh, fulfill the definition of the cascade blade so this figure shows the arrangement of the cascade blade so the cascade blades normally used for the experimental investigation to obtain maximize maximize leaf force and also to obtain minimize drag force so in this in the experiment uh, we will change uh, the angle of attack in order to determine which condition which physical condition will produce maximum lift condition with minimum drag force condition okay because um, in order to obtain uh, these properties this result so we need to uh, change the angle so that we obtain the opti optimum angle of attack in terms of alpha value 
and second things we can determine the optimum spacing between the blades so which uh, which amount of spacing value will have will get the maximum lift condition also minimum lift uh, sorry minimum drag condition because all these factors will determine the performance of the actual compressor or actual turbine so normally we need to conduct uh, what we call a wind wind tunnel investigation so the figure shows the arrangement of a wind tunnel so if you look in detail this section and if you refer to the definition of a cascade blade so this section actually refer to refer as a cascade blade because we have a set a set of blade comprises a number of identical blades equally spaced and parallel to one another one another okay so this this is the example of the result they obtained from the experiment from the wind tunnel so the photo shows the numbers of blades so we call the arrangement in terms of uh, the arrangement as a cascade blade so from the result we can see in terms of the flow direction which part will have the laminar flow which part will have the turbulent flow so from the features of flow we can determine we can guess whether the arrangement the angle of attack uh, whether the what I call the condition will produce uh, what I call more drag force or less drag force by referring to the turbulent condition uh, of the of the result okay and from the result also normally uh, the cascade will attach with uh, pressure sensor and so on so we will get pressure different value and so we can see in terms of flow stream pattern in order to analyze the what I call the drag force condition also lift lift force condition okay this slide will show you the actual casket blade arrangement in a wind tunnel so we have cross section rowing of a wind tunnel and we have text section that refer to the 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 casket blade and this is example of the actual cascade blade arrangement in a wind tunnel and if we take out the cascade blade this is the actual features of the cascade blade so we have identical shape of blade equally spaced and parallel to one another so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine blades for the cascade Okay, so ni, this one is another photo to show the cascade blade with uh, different material with different materials. Okay, the cascade blade implementation in the blade design process. So now we want to know the significance of the cascade blade testing in the blade design. So for a turbo machine, before we design a turbo machine. So there are a few requirement uh, to a few main requirement that that we need to consider before we start design the the blade. First, we need to have the maximum efficiency and also we need to have minimum energy losses for each design of the blade. So the first stage of the design is the aerodynamic and load investigation where we need to know the behavior of fluid flow around a blade that we design second stage is structural design where we select the suitable material 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 that need to be used for the blade third stage uh, a manufacturing technology where we fabricate the blade next stage prototyping so we need to create the actual size model for validation and then the blade testing 
test the prototype with similar condition to the actual condition and then the final condition produce the blade that we already designed okay so the cascade blade implementation actually consists in the first stage of blade design which is the aerodynamic and load investigation where we 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 will determine the behavior of fluid flow around a blade okay that's why we conduct the cascade blade investigation in a wind tunnel so after we design the blade normally uh, the blade in terms of investigation we can run the simulation uh, uh, investigation by using a certain fluid uh, compositional fluid dynamic software in order to optimum the design of the blade then we conduct the actual um, experiment of the blade by using a cascade blade in a wind tunnel for validation whether the result they obtain from simulation similar with the actual condition in the experiment so from the wind tunnel experiment of the cascade blade we will get a qualitative data in term of as shown in the figures in term of uh, flow pattern whether the liminal flow turbulent flow and so on and also we will get uh, the pressure different from the pressure sensor we also will get the quantitative data such as x and y force forces lift and drag forces a different kind of coefficient total pressure loss losses and so on and this quantitative data we will learn throughout the chapters of the turbo machine and from the these two data we can determine the maximum efficiency and also the minimum energy losses uh, from the experiment and also from the simulation so if from the uh, experiment we'll get we get the efficiency the result shows the efficiency very low and the energy loss is very high so we need to change a uh, certain parameter of the blade the design of the blade in terms of angle in terms of profile and so on and then we need to repeat the simulation approach and also the uh, the experiment with wind tunnel until we get the maximum efficiency and minimum energy losses from the experiment result so after that then we go to the process of design uh, such as structural design manufacturing technology prototyping bed testing and the final one uh, will uh, we can produce the blade that we already designed as shown in the figures okay now is the time to test your understanding to the topic that we discussed uh, just now okay please answer the question below first question where is the main location of the blade that focus in the two-dimensional analysis question number two why do we need to conduct the cascade blade investigation give two reasons okay you have to answer the question by clicking the link provided in my blog remember that you need to know the password in order to open the link the password was given throughout the video related to this topic the clue also will be uh, will be given in the link okay good luck that's all for part number one chapter number two assalamualaikum